Sofia Invelt, member of the European Parliament, PEP, rep rapporteur in ECON, is joining us now with comment on pan-European personal pension product. Ms. Invelt, thank you for being with us. Hello. The European Commission proposed project of a regu regulation on pan-European personal pension product PEP in June last year. After almost one year, are we closer to the approval of the framework and where the process stands? Uh, yes, we are coming closer step by step, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a very complex proposal. Uh, we have 28 member states uh, who all have a variety of pension arrangements, we have state pensions, we have occupational pensions, we have uh, the, the, the private, the personal, individual pension plans, um, we have different fiscal treatments, so it's extremely complex. Uh, and pensions are also, they're not just any financial product, they are of course um, essential for our income after retirement. So for many people, a good retirement provision really makes the difference between, let's say, poverty or, um, you know, a comfortable life. So I think it's, it's only reasonable that we take our time. Um, there's, there's no rush, but in the European Parliament, we're working at a very steady space. At the same time, the member state governments are going through the same process, and we hope we can start negotiations uh, after the summer break and hopefully conclude before the end of the year. What are the main factors for the success of PEP? Uh, well, clearly uh, the, the fiscal incentive is a very important one. Uh, we also have to make sure, first of all, that it's a trusted product. People have to know that this is a safe product, that it's a good product, that it will give them a good return. Um, it will have to become, uh, you know, a known European brand, uh, and that in competition with with other providers. I mean, because in some countries the market is already very well developed, uh, almost saturated, and in other countries it's almost non-existent. Um, so, you know, pep providers will have to adapt to different situations, uh, also different regulatory systems, but. I think the most important thing is that it seemed to be uh, trusted, simple, easy to use, uh, safe, but also a profitable product. People need to get a good return on their investment. Um, is the comparison between the different PEP products going to be very complicated? Uh, well, we hope. <laughs> We hope we can make it as simple as possible. And I think you have to distinguish. Um, the European Commission had proposed that there will be five different PEPs, that providers can offer no more than five PEPs. Um, in the European Parliament, we have proposed to, to scrap that restriction. We've said, OK, there will be one basic PEP. That will be the product that you know most people are going to buy. It will be a kind of you know off-the-shelf, ready-made product, very simple, very safe. Um, and then we leave it to the market to determine how many more PEPs there will be. But we have, so that would be complicated. On the other hand, we have um, suggested uh, fairly extensive uh, information obligations for the providers so that uh, the consumers can really compare easily. Um, we uh, will also encourage the creation of these comparative websites where people can compare the products. We're also encouraging the, the let's say, the, the acceleration of the development of a site where all European citizens can, uh, can get a complete overview of their pensions. I mean, we have something in my country. It's a site that's called something like uh, mypensions.nl for my country. And there, if you go there, you, you enter your social security number and then you get all the entitlements that you have. So you can see in one look, you know, what you can expect after, expect after retirement. And then you know, you know, will you be short or is it necessary to do a bit more saving? Um, you know, how can you do it? What's most profitable? What's, what's the safest option? Uh, what is the most suitable for me at my age, et cetera. And we, we feel that there should be such a site uh, for all European citizens. Uh, when do you expect the first PEPs to be offered? 
Who, uh, I don't know, that all, actually it depends more on the member states. I think, I mean, we are still going through the process in Parliament, so I cannot preempt uh, the outcome, but so far I have to say uh, the mood is very constructive, even if there are different political um, ideas, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very positive process. Uh, I expect the European Parliament to vote its position uh, early July, so before the summer break. Uh, if the member states do the same, then we can start negotiations after the summer break and we can uh, wrap up the, the vote on the regulation by the end of this year. Uh, so then it could enter into force within the next uh, uh, two years or something. Um, but I don't think that's the biggest obstacle. The biggest obstacle will be the, the tax treatment. And that is something which relies entirely on the political will of the member states. Um, so, and I cannot, I cannot predict that. What will the market of personal pensions look like in 2025? <laughs> oh, if I knew, uh, um, no, but what I hope it will look like, first of all, I hope um, that pension coverage and pension adequacy is going to improve dramatically in a couple of years. I also hope that the sustainability of the pension systems is going to improve, and that means that you know, some radical reforms have to be done in a number of countries, uh, because it's clear that a lot of pension systems are not sustainable. Uh, but I also hope and think that um, pensions are going to adapt more to the actual needs of people, to the um, you know, to their career patterns, to labor market patterns, because the whole notion that, like in my country, the idea was uh, you go to school, then maybe you study for a few years, and then you work with the same employer for 40 years. And then you get a pension, which is 70% of your uh, last uh, salary. I mean, but that pattern doesn't exist anymore. People may have short-term contracts, then they change employer, then they may work uh, as, a, as an independent for a couple of years or start up a company, and then they'll go back to school for a couple of years. So this whole idea of a uh, sort of a linear build-up of your pension provision, that doesn't exist anymore. And I think that should be reflected a lot more in the pension systems that we have, uh, because the current pension systems do tend to benefit the the older generations more and we have to cover a lot more for the younger generations because they actually get the short straw so i really hope that by 2025 that that will have improved